for, for plebs, by plebs, dropping the Bitcoin only signal. Pleb underground. Welcome everyone to the Pleb Underground. Pleb Underground, we're now 97 dead. Yes, that's the highest private, sub 100. I like a little cheesy bean, not like Mac and Fred. Laser eyes not to 100k, but until Fiat's dead. Pleb Underground, we're unlike the rest, won't deliver you filtered at a sponsor's behest. But Rack sends a warning, but they don't like the test. It's now 24, not even Bolt 12, regressed. Let your guard down, go OTC, smoke the gap like an O, TC's a general, run OTC, full cream, nothing OTC. The dream, go long for the goat, easy, release, seam, strong backer, no float, TD, we go for two, run play action, control zone, no copy paste reaction. I'm back this week from time in Nashville. The world's not for the meek, but I won't trash mill. I got a few lines, but no, don't need the flash grill. Don't want to buy gold, but P2P cash will. Help with adoption, but don't need to mash pill. Partisan guys in suits come to clash kill. Gotta take a stand until you're rash hill. I'll keep writing until ash to ash quill. The superhero up next built tic-tac-toe, but it's on chain, couldn't quit like Django. This episode's juicy, fresh like mango. Speak your mind fully, be a man, go. Absolute fire, man. I missed you last week. Thrilled that you're back. Guys, welcome back to the Pleb Underground. And joining us today, very special guest, fellow Bitcoiner and freelance, freelance dev, or freelance dev with a Bitcoin focus. Is that correct? We've got Super Tesla. That's all correct. And Good I think trying to like join Dude. the rankings of like people who've been on Pleb Underground the most because I feel like Super Test that's been on now this will be like two and a half times or something like this. So because he I don't know how you count it at this point, but yeah, he's 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 in the running for for yeah the the the, the most the most established guest With on Pleb two? Underground. Okay. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, thank you. It's great to be here and honored to have honored to be on the show. Thank you. Sweet. Um, I'm back. super excited. Yeah, super excited to talk to you. And but before we before we dive into everything that Super Testnet is doing and what's going on in Super Testnet's life, we're going to dive into the number. Yeah, the numbers, of course, brought to us by Time Chain Stats and Time Chain Calendar. What do the numbers look like this week, Phil? At the time of this recording, the block height is 855,113. The Bitcoin fiat exchange, 63,246. Big Max per Bitcoin, 12,280. Just want to point out, we're still above 11,000 Big Max. We were there like two weeks ago. So two weeks ago, we were getting less Big Max. We're still getting more Big Max. Things are looking good. Anyways, total public lightning capacity, 4,980. The fastest fee, eight sats per V-byte. What happened on, to those fees? Anyways, so Moscow on, time, on 1580. Yeah. In the mid, on that yes. chart in the middle, I believe price is in green, right? And, and hash yes. rate is in, is in orange, right? So the, yes. Clearly, the miners think the price is going to go up, right? Because they keep deploying more hash. Um, and uh, if it looks like when the... And it's kind of what's the word it's somewhat arbitrary based on what scales you choose but it looks like in general when the the hash rate and the price are close that then you then get an increase in the the price not not long after and there's some bullshit at hopium for you guys uh but uh yeah we're in the numbers we're in the numbers and yeah. you know what's speaking of speaking of miners speaking of miners let's go take a look because there's something kind of interesting that went on with Marathon, and that's right. We're going to bring it up in the numbers. Here we go. Oh, yeah. I told Portland he's a shit coiner at the conference like many ah, times. Ah, so yeah. it was it was he's, you. Like, he, he's like he's like some rapper. He's like talking two chains you. all these days, bro. And I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about, you shit coiner? It was, okay, yeah. Cause he, I didn't do he it came in the middle a, of his talk, but he, like, you know, like, you know, I, uh, yeah, come on. Dude, he came into a space and he's like, I'm being called a shit coiner now. <laughs> and we're like, what happened? Of course it was me. Of course it was you. Okay, so check this out, guys. Let, let's let, let's dive into yes, this, man, right? You heard his feelings. Wait, before, before I introduced Jeff Garzik on my stage, I asked the audience to fill in, like, because there were a bunch of empty seats, so that we could 2x the audience. Yes, I wanted to 2x the audience before Jeff Garzik came on stage. Um, pun intended. <laughs> All right, so let's let's dive into the uh, let's dive into the numbers here because this is this is pretty interesting. Okay, 
Uh, July 25th, you guys might remember, Mara announced, oh, yeah, we're purchasing, we're purchasing 100 million Bitcoin. Yay. But guess what? The same day, right? The same day, largest Bitcoin miner on Wall Street. There's only 21 million Bitcoin, Phil. Oh, sorry, $100 million worth. Thank you very much. Super yeah, well said, $100 million, super. yeah. Thank you for the correction. Largest Bitcoin miner on Wall Street ordered to pay $138 million. Okay, so there we go. So like down $38 million, And then, of course, right, the, the end result is Mara's Q2 2024, right, where their revenue increased by 78%, but they still ended up going down. And... So yeah, you could take a look right here. Their adjusted a bit bud decreases to 85 million on the quarter. So anyways, the whole reason why I'm bringing this up, the whole reason why I'm bringing this up is because the miners, we're seeing the hash rate go up. The price is stabilizing higher. And yet there appears, there kind of appears to be some consolidation in the mining space, right? There was Riot that was announcing that they were buying more shares of, what was it, BitFarms? Right, so they're kind of trying to take them over. It's interesting. It's it's an interesting landscape. I feel like that would have happened more during the bear market, right? Not well, now. Well, that miners miners get pinched, so. right, when it comes to their costs. Um, and if you're a larger miner, generally you can negotiate a better power rate, and so therefore some of the bigger ones can be more profitable especially if they haven't used too much debt or any debt to to grow to be that big the problem is a lot of them have and so uh i, I don't know how how good a footing many of these miners are actually on but you know i do think it's something where it's, it's one industry where there is kind of natural selection if the numbers work they work if they don't people don't last i wonder if it has something to do with the oil field miners because from my understanding for them it's pretty much free money and I don't know how you compete with that. If you've got to pay for electricity and these other guys get it for free, how do you compete? Like the people at Tarantula are helping. Tarantula has been helping like Native Americans that have uh, like methane wells that are untapped uh, to tap them and then run Bitcoin miners off it. Like if you've got free yeah. energy uh, that you're not using. And I think like Shell Oil is doing this now where they're plugging in Bitcoin miners whenever so. they dig a new well. Uh, I mean, those are some pretty, that's pretty hard to compete against. It would not surprise me if they, if a lot of the miners who have to pay for electricity, it's like, you know, the competition has come so far where it used to be, you, you could only be profitable if you're, if your money, if, if you had electricity at 10 cents and then it was 5 cents, then it was 1 cent. Now it's like negative. You have to have, you have to be paid to create energy in order to compete in this market now. It's a very interesting scenario. I, I'm very curious to see how it plays out. So let me, I mean, do you do you guys think there's any hope for the home miners, eh? the, the the bid axes of the world? It's a lottery, right? You can't make I mean, yeah, money it's a back lottery. Like, unless, unless you hit it. Like it's, it's there's no, you can't just join a, a pool and uh, get a get a cut of hash rate. It's pointless. You have to like solo mine um, and, and and hope that you hit a block. Otherwise, it's it's just, they're completely pointless. Um, and lo as long as people understand that, that they're, they're playing the lottery with, like a small amount of electricity, then that's fine. Um, but I, yeah, I think there's a lot of people who sell it almost like, hey, you can contribute to the network. No, that's bullshit. Like you're not really like contributing enough hash. Even if like, I think it's like if you get a million people running them, it, it has some sort of significance. But it's like, you, I don't think you can have a million people playing the Bitcoin lottery. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I want to 200... make a. I want to make a website where. You you click a button and it and it hashes a block and sees if it came up with the right number of zeros and when it doesn't it'll be like oh you lost try again that'd be fun Bitcoin lottery would they so what happens like, so hold on a second though, mining, but would they actually hash a block UI. yeah yeah it would just one click equals one hash interesting one click equals one hash. hash. But are they actually yeah. hashing or are they just and clicking? We would give it the user interface where, you know, they're just clicking a button. Like in, like in a casino where you, you pull the lever and you, yeah. and you hope that three sevens come up or three grapefruits or something. This would be like you're you're hoping that 35 hey, zeros hey, come up. Why don't you row. build it? Why don't <laughs> you build it? That sounds <laughs> That's like what I was just saying. Build. I, don't want to I build feel it. like you could build that. That seems, that seems like something about. Yeah, I could. You know, it'd be kind of too easy maybe for you. I don't know. It's on, it's on my to-do list. Pretty cool. I think it's a good idea. 
<laughs> All right, guys, that's going to wrap up the numbers and we're going to move it on over to the Fireside Chat. The Fireside Chat is brought to you by CypherSafe. Check them out at cyphersafe.io. The pet rock enjoyers in disbelief. Check out the Bitcoin Rolo Triangle. 16 ounces of solid titanium. Check it out at cyphersafe.io. That's the Bitcoin Rolo Triangle. Welcome back, everyone. The Fireside Chat. You know who the guest is. We've got Super Testnet. And for the people who don't recognize him, um, I will point you guys to, and I'll probably put a link in the show to the Bitcoin Plus Plus live streams. Super Testnet uh, spent a really good amount of time with us on those live streams, and I, I believe made them absolutely awesome. So, dude, it, it's totally cool to have you in the hot seat at the fireside chat with us, so that we can we could dive into all things Super Testnet. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Sweet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's dive into it. Um, you're you're a freelance you're you're a freelance programmer with a with a focus on Bitcoin. Let's start with that. Um, why did you why did you become fascinated with Bitcoin? Uh, I thought it was just a really cool thing. Uh, I started researching how Bitcoin works in the year 2017. Uh, found out about Script, and I was like, I I want to do that. I want I want to program Bitcoin. So I sort of taught myself how to program and then started learning how to do how to do Bitcoin script. And now I just do that all the time. I just make cool stuff. And, uh, and that's what I do. We are going to talk about this, this cool stuff that you do. Actually, if you can, if you could give an example of, of one of the cool things that you've done. The, my latest thing that I released is something called State Chain JS, which uses Bitcoin's multi-stick technology um, to make a, uh, to, to make it, um, a, well, I, I don't want to call it a layer two. I'll call it a layer 1.9. To make a layer 1.9 of Bitcoin, where uh, you can transfer a coin very cheaply and very uh, quickly, faster than the Lightning Network, actually. And um, and it, it it's kind of neat. It's it's fun. You use a you use a third party to prevent double spending, and he has the other key in the multi. -state. Tesla, why why are all the numbering of the layers of Bitcoin rational numbers? Like, why can't we have any irrational layers? Like, I want like a pi level, like an e level of Bitcoin. Like, why why is no one building this? Um, you know, stay tuned. Uh, when I do when I'm going at Tabcon, I'm going to be teaching people how to build their own layer two. And uh, if you want to build a layer root two, uh, I think there'll be an opportunity for you. Okay, so let's hold on. Go. Let, let's go. Because we, we discussed this uh, a little bit before the show. So let's let's dive into the layer two stuff. Okay, because last week we had John Carvalho on the show and we were talking Dude, about it's essentially. Funny. He came on on a week yeah. like that I'm not here. And yeah, apparently I think he came to this party that me and Nifty hosted in, in Madeira, but he's got me blocked on Twitter. I don't what? know why he's got me blocked. It's probably because like, oh, I agree oh, with Shinobi on something and like that, you know, they can't stand each other, those two. Like, <laughs> but uh, I mean, he, he's, he's a tether spook. So maybe that's, yeah. that's it as well. Um, hey. did, that, maybe that's what did he come on to like defend really? like after Mark was on? He's like, oh, Tether are good people. What happened? No, no, I, I actually uh, I had him on because of uh, what he's building, right? With um, with Synonym, and I, I just I like his takes. Like a lot of times he has with Tether like, Labs, huh? Yeah, with uh, with, with Tether, Tether Labs. Labs, absolutely. I mean, like, look, it, it's you can make fun of him though, but the majority of the space is captured by Tethered, so you know that's why it's Tethered. <laughs> so, but anyways, I, anyways. I, I, like synonym. I had some synonym toast crunch for breakfast. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it's terrible okay. spice. <laughs> it's Do you really think it's terrible? I don't know. I, I don't think it's that great. I don't think it's that great. But anyways, what, what do you guys think? Let us know. <laughs> Is cinnamon a terrible spice? Comment comment below if you like synonym. Right? Synonym. 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 That word. <laughs> Okay, let, let's go back to the let's go back to the real stuff. Okay, back to the lightning. Okay, so what is your definition of a layer two? How Somewhere would you define you can... a layer two for Bitcoin? Because we know a it's not root two. stock, we know it's not stacks. Sorry, go on. A layer two is somewhere where you can put your bitcoins and do a bunch of transactions there, and when you're done, you can get your bitcoins out without needing anyone's permission. 
Yeah, I like that. It tr to me, it trustlessly settles back to the to the base layer. And so to me, there are only two examples, lightning and mercury. Like liquid doesn't really count because it needs to be signed off by the Federation. Mm -hmm. uh, Testnet, what do you think? I don't think mercury counts. Uh, so I think there's just one and it's lightning. Um, the reason why I don't think mercury counts is because you don't you don't you don't know that you have a unilateral exit. If, if they have been honest throughout the entire usage of the protocol, if, if they have acted, acted honestly, then you do have a unilateral exit, and it's a layer two. But you can't know that for sure. You might try and go and exit, and because you're time-locked, and they're not, they could just rug you and and take your coins. And uh, it, so that that can happen, and you have no idea whether, whether it's going to, whether you actually have a unilateral exit or not. So hold on a second. So you believe that a layer two is still Bitcoin, right? You, All right, you Nick move it Gregory, into this Super layer. Testnet called you a scammer. All right, we're done. Moving on, next question. Um, <laughs> so, like, the, the, the think, Topher think... and Tristan, like, seem like maybe okay guys, but, like, how come, like, you used, you used to work for one of them and they fired you? I can't imagine anyone firing Super Testnet. Yeah, I, I know, feel like right? the, the, peop the people well, need you... to know, how could Super Testnet get fired? Was it just so he could follow his hopes and dreams and build... Um, two player games on chain on bitcoin um yes yeah, so that was mostly why but uh i first of all tristan and Topher are both awesome and i love what they're building over at bit escrow and everyone should check it out um i was i'm super happy that i was part of the launch of that uh that project uh i've got the papers and the papers show that i quit i did i was not fired i was practically fired because he asked me to quit but technically you i heard quit. it here first um, please yeah. Uh, so the reason why is because I wasn't working on bid escrow. I, he, he hired me on as C, CTO. I had part of my agreement was that I would um, work on this project, and I wasn't. I wasn't doing it. Um, I was working on other stuff. And so he said, "Look, if you're not going to work on the thing that we're that we're trying to build, I have to get a different CTO." And I was like, "That's that good. You should do that." Yes. I mean, can't fault him for this, right? No, I, I don't fault him. Yeah. I think he did the right thing. Yeah. And I and I support him a hundred percent. I think Excellent. what he's doing Excellent. is great. And he's got a better person to do that now. Okay. How do we how do we put uh Super Testnet into an escrow to ensure the future of Super Testnet and, and can those guys help? He's trying to figure out how we somehow make more super test nets. <laughs> No, because like the scarcity is real, but it's more about like you know how do we keep Super Testnet in an escrow to to you know to secure his his uh state of being. I I don't I'm not I'm not a number you can't you can't put me in escrow. I mean, that's a okay, fair so the, okay, so now that we've established that we 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 can't put Super Testnet into a cage, um, and he's and he's flying the the cage that he's not being put in. Uh, what, what is he gonna? What is he gonna? What is he gonna build next? What, what is? What is he? What is he building now and, and next? What is the future hold for well, Super Testnet? I've worked on three different projects this week. The one I think you'd most be interested in is another new BitVM application. Um, it's a coin flip app. So I thought there's a lot of testnet apps for BitVM now, but I don't think there are very well. There aren't any for mainnet. So I wanted to make one for mainnet, and I've been working on um a, a app where you flip a, you base two parties flip a coin that's the that's the bit vm app and whichever one wins gets the money and uh i'm this one's off chain this one it doesn't doesn't do the coin flip on mainnet like other um or on on the blockchain rather like other uh coin flip apps i've written in the past uh so you can actually withdraw over lightning if you win the game which is cool that is cool so that's what i've been that is one of the things i was working on this week I also spent a lot of time working on RoboStats, which is uh, a kind of an analytical engine for the RoboStats uh, darknet market. You said uh, RoboStats, I... did you say? Yeah, RoboStats. Uh, so I, I, I like scrape data from their API, from the RoboStats API, and then put it together into a little chart for you to see. Stuff like how many orders have been done, what currencies are most commonly used, and like break that down over time so you can see month by month, stuff like that. Um, so that's what I, yeah, that's what so, I was working on most of this week. And then I'm also making like a cashew wallet that has NWC support. 
Uh, there's like 15 of those so now. And I, I want one. What is Nostra Web Web Client or what Nostra Wallet? Well, what does it Nost stand for? Nostra. Nostra stands for Nostra Wallet Connect. It's Thank a you. standardized API for interacting with Lightning wallets um, using the Nostra protocol as the message transport. And I think it's really cool. So I, I wanted to make a wallet with it and started one and got pretty far along, but not all the way there yet. So it means it's familiar with zaps and that sort of thing. Yes, yes. It's able to do zaps. It's able to basically um, you have you can have an Oster client when you when you um, click the zap button, it'll automatically send funds from your wallet, which could be in your pocket or something to the destination. And you don't have to get it out and scan a QR code. So look. Okay. No. And wait, you said so you say you're building your own eCash mint? No, not a or mint, just, just a client. Wallet. Just a client. Yeah. Um although yeah, I did get I did get will the your idea client for e interface last with night, multiple so. mints. I'm not I mean I, I think the the world of eCash mm -hmm. is exploding right now, but and, and and probably there's new things to learn every week. But what do you see essentially uh wallets interfacing with any mint? Is that a good way of looking at it? Or... I think they should be able to. Uh, I, yeah. I, in my th thought on this, I don't think you should use a mint for large amounts of money if you don't trust it, or mm -hmm. even medium amounts of money. Like um, if you don't trust it, only use it for like snicker bar money, where you does it doesn't bother you if it gets stolen. Yeah. Um. So I would want to say, you know, as soon as the user gets, gets some configurable amount, like over I don't know for forty dollars or something, then start asking them, hey. Uh, do you trust this guy? Like, if you trust him, then if, oh, fine. But if you don't, you know who's running it or whatever, then consider not putting forty bucks I, on it or, or whatever. I, I can't remember if it's currently established or if it's something that's coming soon. But I believe I heard Callie talking about the concept of paying one Lightning invoice with balances from mm -hmm. multiple eCash mints. Is that is that something yeah. that already exists? So that you could be like, hey, I'm going to spend six dollars that starbucks and uh it's i'm getting like 150 from this e-cash mint 250 from this one 50 cents from this one uh i think i think there's a proof of concept that you can do it um if you're gonna i think you can do this with just any lightning wallet if you take if you take a lightning invoice normally you scan it with your lightning wallet and just hit pay and it pays the full amount yeah. But you can like if you're if you're running your own node, you can tell it to only pay half of the amount, and you can scan the same invoice with another wallet and tell it to pay half the amount, and that will work. Like it should work. So I think there's like a proof of concept showing that because it works with any Lightning invoice, you can also do it with eCashmint. Uh, but e one 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 clients. argument essentially for like so so the problem with eCash is that, that it's pretty fractionally reserved. Like that's my my issue with it. Like mm -hmm. you can't you, you don't know you can't prove that it's not, um, and so. Some people, some people say the hedge against this is to have just very small amounts in loads of different e-cash mints, and then you use this technology of paying from like a, a whole bunch of different ones together, and then you yeah. can hold a giant balance in e-cash, but without like individual risk of any of like uh, against the. So you kind of like multi. It's not really multi sig. It's like multi destination your e cash because you don't have like dust limits, right? Like, uh, and so you can mm -hmm. have tiny amounts of e cash with thousands of mints, for example. And that might be how people yeah. hold their kind of current account money. Um, I think it's quite an interesting concept, but um, but none of this sounds practical. Oh, no, I think it's very po it's possible. Software. It's just like who's no, I know, running the e cash. You just need. I'm just picturing the user experience, though. We're super early. We're super early. Yeah, like, we're totally. Like, early. There's an e cash. There's an e cash conference in. How is it already August? There's an e cash conference in like two months in Berlin. Oh wow! Uh, you know, yeah. Okay. You mentioned that now. you can't do proof of reserves with e cash. You can't prove that they have the money to pay you. And I'm not sure that's entirely true. Uh, in fact, in my, you can, be, and one of the reasons why I think it's the issue I have with proof false. reserves is that it's a static report. It's not a dynamic report, and like it's pointless having a static report about proof reserves because you can shuttle money in and then shuttle it out again. I don't, I don't think you can do it with you. Can, there's another way to do it, and the way that I did it with StateChange.js uh, is to have it so that you actually audit the the Bitcoin address that your money is in. And since you have a key to that address and you can see the address on chain, you can verify that the funds are there at any How time. How can you know the amount of claim against it? You don't know what the total claims against that Bitcoin are. I think that's the bit that this is the, is the point is that there's pretty usually so, greater claims against them. Right. So, 
you can you can prove that you have a claim to it by demonstrating that you have a signature from the uh, mint that gives it to you after a certain time lock. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can prove that every prior one, every every prior claim to that has a has a different time lock that they they can only access it after you so that you have the latest claim to it. Uh, but that only works if the mint is honest. If the mint it has signed something secretly for someone else, then you, then you don't have it. You, you, there's no way to, you, you can prove that you have a claim on the money, but there's no way to prove that no one else has a claim on that money as well. That's my point, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that's really, you know, pr proof of reserves proves that the money is there. Proof mm -hmm. of liability is proves that you have a claim to it. Uh, not getting rugged is a separate thing. Like the, if, if he if he just steals the money from you, that's a totally separate thing from whether he proves that you have a claim on the money. Mm. Yeah, the, r the chance of rug though increases with fractional reserve. Like it just. Yeah, but, you, but it's a nice thing. At least with uh, with what's it called, um, the state chains, it's it's a lot harder to do fractional reserve. Uh, than it is with with a regular eCash mint, and it has enhanced privacy by, by comparison, which is another reason why I think state chains are better. That the, you get better privacy when you use them than than you do. But with you don't have layer twos. I don't. I think they're one point nine because you, you can't know that the mint is honest or the operator is honest. Mm. Okay. Interesting. I, I felt like we concluded that very well. Then. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think so too. Uh, but yeah, moving on. Uh, moving on from this. Still good. One, one, one point nine is a lot better than one. So it's not. It's not quite as good as a layer two, but it's getting there. It's really close. I really, I really like state chains. I mean, this is iterations, right? Like, I, I don't see a, I, I don't see a problem with that with that type of stuff, right? As long as we're honest as to what the trade offs are and and what it really is. Well, the the problems start to happen it, socially, anyways, in terms of social acceptance when it's just a bunch of cheerleading and nobody knows why they're cheerleading for something. You know, like where they talk about how it's like a silver bullet, you know, like lightning's the silver bullet. This is the silver bullet. That's and no, that, that's just not how that works. I, I've, never, I've never heard there. anyone say it's a silver bullet. But yeah, no, I know. I'm I'm see, that's the difference, right? You're used to talking to other devs, right? Where where you guys are, are critical about it and, and are being objective about the trade offs you're writing code for. Whereas when you spend your time in degenerate Twitter and the social sphere, right it it's it's a lot more uh it's a lot more high level cheerleading <laughs> so mm -hmm. it, it's a bit of a different it, it, it's it's a bit of a different feel but anyways uh moving on from that uh speaking of which i i've noticed that you've been having some interesting conversations uh with the with the monero bros um so we're going to talk a little bit about bitcoin privacy and i guess before we talk about um this conversation that you're having with the monero bros um i i guess the uh, the first thing monero that, bros yeah, Monero Bros. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about, there seems to be misconceptions about privacy on Bitcoin, right? Like the the the, the Monero Bros tend to, and, and not just them, but any type of privacy shitcoin advocate uh, seems to downplay Bitcoin's, Bitcoin's privacy. In your, in your eyes, what are they getting wrong? What are they getting wrong about Bitcoin privacy? Or is it just pure disingenuous, like, Nope. You know what I mean? Like Bitcoin's not private. Monero's private because the base layer's obfuscated. I'd rather talk about what they get right first. Oh, um, okay. So yeah, so, let's do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, okay. We've done that. Uh, now let's talk about what they get wrong. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You're going to have um, a debate with no, this guy. You're stuff, just right? going to kill him. Uh, <laughs> um, they get they get a lot of stuff right. Uh, Bitcoin on mm. on the base layer. If you just if you just use a standard wallet and you don't use like coin joins or anything, mm. um, you're you're revealing a lot of data on the blockchain. And if, even if, for example, you're revealing who the sender is, that's directly to the sender. You're revealing the the recipient. You're just mm -hmm. putting their address right there in plain text for everyone to see. You're revealing the amount, uh, and that's most of what. I try to protect those three pieces of data, sender, recipient, amount, when I'm building privacy software. Mm -hmm. um, also, so that's, that's typical. How, there are some things you can do to mitigate this. If you use coin joins, you're obfuscating, uh, to some extent, you're obfuscating who the sender is because you're, you've got a group of, I don't know, 10 or 50 or however many people are in your coin join, 
and any one of them could be the sender of the money. It's difficult to tell from you know just looking at a coin join who the sender is. If you use pay joins, and you can hide the amount because instead of putting the amount that you're sending, uh, like if I have a hundred dollars in my address and I'm sending ninety of it to my recipient, you get a, an address from your recipient that also has money in it. So maybe there's a hundred fifty total. You you have a hundred and he adds fifty to your transaction, and then you send him you know uh 140 of that so it looks like he received 140 dollars instead of 90 but really since 50 of that was already his you actually only sent him you know 90. uh so that's one way of obfuscating the amount with bitcoin is by using pay joins and then you can also obscure the recipient by using like bit 47 or the new bit 352 standard for silent payments um at, or doing it in a coin join so that there's you know, dozens of recipients, you don't know which one is, is the one you're sending to. Uh, if, so there are tools on Bitcoin that we can use to obfuscate the sender, the recipient, and the amount. Even if you use them, though, you're still putting a lot of data on the blockchain. Like mm -hmm. you're, you're putting, even if it's just a list of senders and a proof that you're one of them, that's something. Like someone can start compiling that data, make a profile of all of the addresses that have been in this thing, and start saying, "Well, I know it wasn't. I know it wasn't this guy because this was an exchange. So I know that's not the ascent, the sender of this transaction." And we talked to that exchange, and they said it wasn't them. We know it wasn't this one because that was us. We were we were in the coin join too, you know, as chain analysis, and we know we didn't send the money to whoever, so we can knock out that guy. They can start doing analytics to try and figure out who you are in a coin join. So it'd be better if you didn't put that information on the blockchain at all. Mm -hmm. It would be better if you didn't put any amount information on the blockchain, and it would be better if you didn't put the recipient on the blockchain. And that's what we do with Lightning. When you make a Lightning transaction, the sender, the recipient, and the amount are all not published for everyone mm -hmm. to see. No information about them goes on the blockchain. And only the, the only people who know the entirety of that information are the sender and the recipient. The sender, mm -hmm. know, well, actually, even the recipient doesn't even know who the sender is. Only the sender knows the full thing. He knows the amount he sent. He knows that he's the sender and he knows who the recipient is. Mm -hmm. but, the, but the other guy doesn't know that. The recipient doesn't even know that. And none of the routing nodes know that. So it's so it's way better for your privacy if you use Lightning where we don't publish anything on the blockchain. Um, now, there's not perfect in Lightning either. Uh, there are probably chain analysis people running Lightning nodes, running routing nodes. And so they can get some amount information by doing that and then correlating and saying, well, we know that at this time, some amount of money flowed through our node. So we know someone sent something to someone that was at least this amount or greater. But even that they don't know because you could you could have sent the you could have sent that amount and then sent change back to yourself. Like there's a lot of cool things you can do with lightning privacy. And uh, it's it's not very well explored yet. Uh, so I, I think the Mutiny guys from Mutiny Wallet are doing a great job of building in into their wallets some of these tools for enhancing your privacy on the Lightning Network. I think the eCash stuff is really good for doing this. The stuff I'm, I've been working on in Mercury, especially Mercury, has been doing with state chains. Shows that you question. have a lot of privacy with Lightning. How, and have Lightning how support. do you... Question. How do, how do you... My, so I... I, I think the Mutiny shirt is like one of the coolest shirts. And so that's why I was like desperate to get one. I've actually got two from, from mm -hmm. Mr. Ben the Carman, uh, a legend in this space. Uh, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, I, I don't use Mutiny because I, I, I'm untrusting of, of browser based lightning wallets. Like, how, how, do you, how do you know that your keys are safe in a browser based lightning wallet? Can you? uh you know i suppose you yes yes you can you can review the code uh, of the application and make sure that you're self-hosting it you can review the code of your browser and make sure that your browser is not sending information about your web page to or your cookies and stuff to someone and you'd have to make sure you don't have any extensions installed because if you have extensions installed those things can read your cookies if you did all of that work you could have pretty good confidence that your private keys are safe um, barring that, I think it's better to just uh, so use it as a, a, a wallet and uh, for, for your pocket and keep twenty dollars in it. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's perfectly yeah. fine to do. You, I think it's great to use stuff like this for um, uh, for for incoming donations and and contributions and purchases, and then withdraw to a more secure wallet after that. But th these things can really enhance your privacy, and and that's wonderful. Is even is if there they're not cost... perfect on. Is there a cost for going between uh, eCash and Lightning? I, I misheard your verb. Is there a cost is, for is there any, e any cost 
for going between the e-cash layer and the lightning layer because you could argue going between lightning and on chain there are costs but my understanding uh, uh, unless i'm mistaken there, there aren't the there aren't costs for going between e-cash and lightning well they're probably is, is no they're they're I, i'm not it's aware of any something. that's charging for that but they ought to because you yeah. can do, you can do it there's a denial of service vector if they don't charge uh for doing mm -hmm. that uh Right now, I don't. I'm not aware of anyone who's charging for it, but I think there is a code for charging money for these, you know, for sending money to people. Actually, there is there is one way that they can do it because they have a setting for where when they you want to pay a lightning invoice with eCash. Yeah, when you want to pay a lightning invoice with eCash, they always say like, let's say your invoice is for a thousand sats. The amount that you have to pay in eCash is always greater than that. It's always like one thousand five sats or something because they they know that they have to pay the sender has to pay routing fees. And they usually will give you back whatever's left over. Like that you have there another endpoint that your wallet can query to say, okay, you only use two of the stats that I gave you for fees. So give me the other three back. Uh, but I think they could just not do that. They could just say, no, we're keeping the extra. And that would be one way of mitigating a denial of service vector and earning some money as a eCash member. But I, I'm not aware of them doing anyone doing that right now. All right, we're gonna we're gonna go back to the uh, the privacy stuff here because because it looks like and here I'm gonna pull this up. It looks like with all these lively discussions that you're having, um, here we go. You've got well, what is this? What when is this going on? This is Sunday. This coming Sunday, yeah. Sunday. It's too bad because this episode drops on Monday, so people who are but you know what? At least people will have the link. They they can go listen to the uh, they can go listen to the reminder. At the uh, at the very least, but yeah, you're going to be having a debate with uh, with one of these uh, with with one of the Monero people, um, talking about mm -hmm. the about implementations and you know the darknet markets and stuff like that. Um, do you yes. guys have? Like and a... this guy was so sweet. Mm -hmm. He he actually he actually came to meet me at my hostel here in Guadalajara, and like he sat down next to me and he was like, "You can't be serious about this stuff you're saying about Monero," and I was like. Well, I, th I do think it's funny. I was like, it is, it's, it's quite funny, all this stuff that we're doing, and, and I'm enjoying it. But uh, yeah, I'm serious. I think you guys are overplaying its, its privacy and that you can do better with payment channels. And uh, so then he was like, listen, this is, you don't know how Monero privacy works. He started to educate me, and we, started, we went back and forth for about probably 45 minutes talking. And he was like, dude, we should do this on it's the It's something air. to do with ring signatures. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's it all is. I know. It's ring signatures and stealth addresses and uh, and amount encryption is the is the basics of how Monero's privacy works. There are other things like they it, use, it looks like you even got Ric it looks like you even got Ricardo jumping in on this, right? This was the mm -hmm. uh, this is one of your uh, this is Fluffy one of your pony. threads, Fluffy Pony. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> he he called me out for a, You're right. a essentially a lie that I told, and I shouldn't have said this. I was making fun of Monero people for not implementing uh, payment channels, which I think but are way yes. better for privacy. And he was like, we, we are. We, it's been on our website since 2019 that we started laying the groundwork. And our most recent stuff it, it helps add support for transaction chaining, which is something you need for payment channels. It's like, there, there is work being done. I actually knew, well, I knew about, I didn't know about the more recent thing, but I knew about the thing in 2019. Mm -hmm. So I shouldn't have said they aren't working on payment channels. They actually are. Uh, and and I apologize for having made fun of them for uh, on the basis of something false. So, so yeah, that, thank you, Ricardo, uh, Fluffy Pony, for calling me out and keeping me honest. Well, yeah. restoring me to honesty, I should say. I, I was I was dishonest for like a day. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. No, but it's good. These conversations are good. I, I think a lot of people are going to get um, some some decent value out of that conver the uh, you know, the discussion, the debate that you guys are going to have. Um, and you know, what's interesting is that we don't really see a lot of these types of debates happening anymore. Unlike back in 2017 and 2018, um, we saw a lot of debates back then. Like there was, it wasn't unusual mm -hmm. to have people debating, you know, the, the merits of, you know, like the, the pros and cons of, you know, one, you know, one implementation versus another and stuff like that. And there was, I feel like there was way more public technical discussions and it seems to me, and maybe again, it could just be because of my echo chamber. It seems to me as though those discussions are, are, are more infrequent. 
What are your thoughts on that? I bet they've just moved. I think yeah, I think eh? they happen less formally now. People people have Twitter spaces all the time, and it's very I, every time I go to one, people are arguing. Uh, but they don't they're not like announced as we're gonna have a debate typically. It's more like we're gonna have a Twitter space and here are our guests. And then some of the, all, all, very frequently they end up debating, but it wasn't announced as a debate. Hmm. But I, yeah, I think I think it still happens. It's it's not it's not gone. It's just it's not fair. I think it's because anywhere. in Bitcoin things move so fast. So if you organize a debate, by the time the debate comes around, it's almost not relevant enough for one of the one or more of the guests and that creates like some sort of like friction or tension that then maybe the debate doesn't happen as planned mm -hmm. uh yeah like that's why it's like i think spaces is kind of a better format for that because things things come people are ready to talk and that's where people are already talking and so people talk there yeah i, I think that's a great thing to have for spaces and there are definitely more of them than there were a few years ago Hmm. Interesting. I yeah, don't know. Two years ago, it was just like me and log scale, and that was about <sighs> it. Log scale, and maybe like you know some swan space or something. But that was that, there wasn't much choice. No, no, there definitely wasn't. Okay, so before we wrap up the the fireside chat, what are what are you excited? What are you excited to to work on? I know you're you're working on what you enjoy right now, but is there something that you're not working on that you would like to be working on? Last night, I got two ideas. I get ideas. I got another one today. I get ideas all the time on new cool stuff I want to build. And two of them I think you guys would be interested in. One of them is called Decoy Zaps, which is like I want to make a widget. And I made a, a bunch of them already for when you like receive money or when you have a website, you can put a little widget on there for people to click and it'll show a QR code for people to pay. And you can also use this for stores and stuff. What I want to do is have one of those where when they generate the invoice, it sends out a fake Zap request. And then when they pay the invoice, it sends out a fake Zap receipt or maybe even several. And this would allow you if someone is ever like, you know, if you're ever if you're ever in court or something, you have you can have receipts and say, look, this was just a Zap. This money was just a Zap that someone sent me here. Here's the proof. Here's the Zap receipt for it. Uh, but they'd actually be decoys. They would just be like fake zaps that that your website automatically generated for this stuff. I think that would be kind of fun to build, decoy zaps. Hmm. And then another one I want to build is a Bolt 12 converter um, because, what's the name? Phoenix recently came out with a Bolt 12 uh, uh, lightning invoice format that has better privacy and it allows, it'll like wake up your phone if you're asleep. So you could, if it's asleep or off, so you can receive money. Or, well, not if it's off. Anyway, it makes uh, they don't have support for lightning addresses though. So I wanted to make a tool where it'll give you a lightning address and have you paste in your Bolt 12. And anytime someone pings your lightning address for an invoice, it'll atomically forward that money to uh, this Bolt 12 offer. And that would allow you to like have a self custodied, you know, Zap wallet for receiving Zaps on Noster and stuff. It could be in your pocket and just receiving money all day. And that would be really cool. You wouldn't have to keep using servers like Stacker News and Wallet of Satoshi. I like this. I like this. Yeah, because I, I do find that that is a little bit clunky, right? When you go to those websites and, and you go to make mm -hmm. payments and stuff. So yeah, oh, man, I like this. I like this. You're you're thinking about the uh, you're thinking about the user experience here from from the pleb perspective. I enjoy that. I can I, I can take that. Thank you. <laughs> and then today I haven't uh, those two. I, I thought of them last night and I added them to my to do list immediately. And then today I had another idea that I haven't added to my to do list yet. Uh, so I have to remember to do that, uh, is to make a, a, a new type of eCash Mint for Cashew, where all funds are held in a multi-sig, and there's a separate Lightning Gateway who you who users interact with the protocol through. But when they're, when they're sending money to this uh, gateway, that, or, or withdrawing from the gateway, he's mm -hmm. just getting credits from the eCash, or from the, from the people who are controlling this multi-sig. Uh, so he's either sending them money, sending them mm -hmm. back their own their own credits, or he's getting them from them if someone's like withdrawing from the Lightning Network. And I think that would be really cool because it would put uh, Cashew on a par with like Fediment as far as having multi-sig support and, and having a federation control the uh, control the funds, which would be neat. So that's another idea I have to add to my to-do list and, and make a multi-sig Cashew Mint. Very cool. Very cool. Well, dude. 
It's been absolutely awesome to uh, to do this fireside chat with you, but we're going to wrap it up and we're going to move it on over to Wrecked. Welcome back to Wrecked, where this week we have the United States government. Why? Look at the numbers. Uh, apparently, they're, they're, someone's stealing their Bitcoin and they're losing their Bitcoin, but they seem to be down a few thousand Bitcoin, guys. Down from 213,000 to 197,000. Doesn't sound good. Why? They're like, they're liquidating. It sounds, they're not hodling. It sounds good to me. I mean, I, I don't want the government to have a bunch of Bitcoin because they stole it, right? Didn't they take that money from people? They sure from did. They, they, they earned it. They stole it. But like, isn't, isn't, isn't MicroStrategy adding to its stack at a faster rate? And like, how much does Coinbase have? And how, actually, how much do the ETFs all have? Like, how much, like, how much Bitcoin is onshored in the United States right now mm. uh, in in publicly held entities that are uh, susceptible to regulatory or state capture? Uh, Too much. I think that number is increasing. Too much. But at least, at least if they are putting some of this Bitcoin back in the market, there's a chance it'll end up in the hands of its original owners, which this, is this is maybe better. I don't know. They sh they should just give it back to them, really. Uh, this is I true. don't see them doing that, though, as you know. This, so, uh, yeah. Anyway, so that was the U.S. government. Up next uh, on Wrecked, uh, uh, Swan. I wasn't here last week because uh, I was uh, on a flight when I when I found out the the news. Um, um, a couple of months ago, I was, I was publicly questioning why was Sw why Swan is twice the size of River. Uh, well, they're not anymore, right? Um, um, I, I am making jokes here a little bit, but it's, it's a sad day that you know so many so many guys lost their jobs because of financial mismanagement um, by some VC wannabe. Um, like, I, I, I think it's. I think it's really shocking that like some some people pretend to be Bitcoin only and espouse certain values, but then don't don't actually live by them. Um, um, and then when that actually then causes problems for other people's livelihoods, Livelihood. I think it's you know very shameful. Um, but anyway, th that's enough. I don't know. The, that's I don't enough know the about story them. Like, um, I, I do know that. Um, if you did lose your job um, uh, with Swan, that uh, Michael Tidwell at TabConf is offering free tickets. Um, yeah, uh, if you're, if you know, you're a developer or other other former Swan employee looking to get a, a job in Bitcoin, uh, the, the Atlanta Bitcoin Conference, TabConf uh, would be happy to host you, and you can network with some other companies. Um, so not not all is lost in uh, in the in the wake of. The mismanagement. Uh, up next, um, you will have, I'm sure, heard from the conference this idea about having, uh, you know, a, a Bitcoin reserve, a strategic reserve. But why is this a terrible idea? Well, Nick Gregory is going to uh, talk us through. Friend of the show, Nick Gregory, uh, mm -hmm. is going to talk us through a few options as to why this is terrible. So he said that he he got DMs asking why Bitcoin may not be ideal as a reserve currency. He stopped doing financial engineering in 2014 when he was at Merrill Lynch. Below are some ideas that could work, uh, and this is this is to like undermine uh, essentially uh, the use of the Bitcoin as a reserve. He says, considering the sophistication of prop funds, this is probably likely. So uh, I'm going to attempt to try and read through these these multiple options here so number one put option ladder attack an attacker could purchase a series of put options on the national currency at various strike prices they then could initiate a large-scale short selling attack on bitcoin driving this price down as the value of the nation national's currency reserves decreases the currency itself may weaken allowing the attacker to profit from the put options two synthetic short through options by constructing a synthetic short position using options buying put options selling call options an attack could create significant downward pressure on the national currency without directly short selling it i'm not going to read through all of them there's nine options here but there are sorry 11 i don't see how it's 11 it goes from 8 to 11 whatever the point That's is why we post links the point is having <laughs> like like connecting fiat to bitcoin is not good for, for, for the fiat nor for the nor for the bitcoin so 
uh, all you people thinking, let's let's take a national currency and back it with Bitcoin. I think it's a bad idea. It's a bad idea. You're you're creating, uh, yeah, a whole bunch of things that's going to create problem. Uh, don't let, let's Here's not do it. We need to build of, separate to the state. We're going to get instead of making we... Bitcoin the reserve currency, make Bitcoin the only currency. That's how you fix it. R right. Right, we don't need it to be reserve True. of something. It is, it is its thing. It doesn't need to it be back. Its it's, it doesn't need to back something else. It's back. Like it doesn't. Yeah, right. We don't it need is the money. asset and the network. Right. You know, like and the and it's, it's the bearer assets. You know, it's this is such nonsense. It's, it's an so asset true. without a liability. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um. All right. So, and then finally, one more story on wrecked. Um. I I think it's amusing. I so I quite like. I quite liked the conference. I thought the conference last week was great, in part because they filled the main stage with politics and they put all of the Bitcoin on my stage, the Genesis stage. <laughs> Content uh, to be out, surely it was not on the live stream. Um, but Forbes uh, apparently are now throwing punches at big Bitcoin 2024. They say when Rage became the machine... Um, uh, the irony here is that, of course, Rage Against the Machine, or Rage for the Machine, as I started calling them, um, were one of the first to adopt vaccine mandates for their conferences uh, yeah. in the COVID era. Um, uh, a funny one. Um, but... Um, it says that, uh, you know, the uh, Rage Against the Machine was kind of against capitalism, etc., etc. Apparently, if the Genesis block on Bitcoin embodied the Rage Against the Machine that destroyed the fi finances of millions in the global financial crisis, Bitcoin 2024 marked the Rubicon when that rage became the machine. Walking into Music City Center on day one, Bitcoin 24 felt less like a Bitcoin conference and more like Money 2020, a fintech industry mainstay that has evolved from payments to every facet of financial services innovation. By now, you've read plenty about the number of politicians and their impact on this year's Bitcoin conference. Ten United States senators and two presidential candidates descended on Nashville and, 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 a, and a former president for the first time. Uh, to win over the digital asset audience, while I'd been to Bitcoin conferences in Miami the past few years, this the the this year's gender promised to be quite different the political presence at the show highlights just one aspect of how truly institutional the industry has become all right so wrecked yes. here is not the conference actually but it's forbes um and i actually think there's a whole bunch of people on twitter like i i i do not approve of a whole bunch of things that david bailey does but i'm starting to see a little bit of like the the vision that he has one second let me fix this yeah your focus is out of focus. Your focus right. is out so, of focus. So, do, no, he's he, not. I think he has a chaotic, neutral nature, and what he and what he's trying to do is orange pill cities. I, I think he 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 does a whole bunch of stuff wrong. Was it a nightmare trying to get between different bits of the conference? Yes. Did it mean that some people who were, wanted to watch main stage stuff basically couldn't watch anything on open stage? Yes. Did it mean that like I was. Uh, uh, late at one point because I went into a secure area that then like could getting out like, was there time. Yes, did the secure the Secret Service uh, steal um, uh, lighters but not somebody's lighter or, or flour from me? Yes, uh, like was there crazy things happening? Yes, was it? Did it mean that like Bitcoin content was was divided? Yes. Is it all a good thing? Depends on who you are. Like, the, what, what, I think what we have to accept a little bit here as Bitcoiners, and Shinobi was echoing these points, I don't, I don't think in as accepting a way, was that we're actually almost getting, what's the word, behind or in front of the Overton window for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of no longer about us. We're in a tale of Bitcoin, of adoption, right? And it's we're now at this point, and it really felt like it this year, that Bitcoin is going more mainstream, is getting adopted by a whole bunch of fucking retards that don't understand what Bitcoin is. Maybe they're going to. I don't know. But the the, this, the, the numbers in Bitcoin, I think, are increasing. The, the Bitcoin is going to be talked about, you know, by more and more politicians. They're going to do more and more bullshit speeches. I say ignore the politics. But it's going to be there. Now, you could well, talk about the politics. You've been complaining about, about how the last some Bitcoiners are sucking up to politicians. 
or like you can kind of i don't know to me we should we should we should ignore some of that and we should focus on building the important things like if if you think the important things are uh, are building you know parallel bitcoin economies then do that if you think the i, I just think I, I think there's lots of people help trying to help bitcoin right now um, and I, I think it's often it's easy for us I, all, myself included, to not see that different people are working on different timelines and on different scales. David hmm. Bailey is like complete fucking degen, well. but uh, I do think he's trying to please. to 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 orange pill people, whatever that looks like. Did, did, I heard I heard I heard he paid twenty million dollars for Trump to be there. Is that insane? Yes, that's fucking insane. Is that is that just a check cut, or is that money that's also coming from fundraising efforts? Who knows? Politics is going to talk more and more and more about Bitcoin, and mm. I say let them. I say keep keep stacking your Bitcoin, keep building your businesses, keep building your families, and keep building your communities. And fuck all the politics. I didn't come here for the politics. I came to Bitcoin in part so I could ignore the politics. And sorry, yes, I've been going for a little while here, but yeah, but, uh, if, fuck the for me, I, I, I agree Bitcoin. more with the Forbes article. Support super and test I net. Let's go. Miss me with let's uh, super test that talk. Bitcoin 2024 and bring me back Bitcoin 2008, uh, where you know things were still a little more cypherpunk, and we actually did ignore politics a lot more. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I'd like, I'd like, yeah, the, the, I didn't go to Bitcoin 2024 because it seemed very. Uh, well, for a number of reasons, one of which is that it seemed too political. Uh, but, but you could yeah, ignore just, it if you didn't go in the main stage. It was just like I, I called it the politics stage. Like it was just separate. You could, you could also ignore it by just not going at all. You know what the reality is? Is that in a few years, in a few years, the Bitcoin conference is not going to be sponsored by random shitcoin companies or even small Bitcoin companies that are trying to make uh, an impression. You know, or trying to get views and likes that they're well, gonna feel they're, they're gonna just the biggest sponsor well no well is that it was actually zappo uh if i'm not mistaken oh, my bad. of course that, yeah they zappo was the, you're right you're right right sorry see yeah but yeah. that, like, that tether, right there is signaling bank. Yeah, yeah. you know like that's signaling in a few conferences man it's gonna be all like merrill lynch and van Eck and stuff like that and and the booths are gonna be the, the booths right the smaller booths are gonna be actual little bitcoin companies that are like hey you know kind of like remember okay. us so how do we fix this uh, right guys if you don't like the the, the way that the big if you don't like the way that the big bitcoin conference dominates <laughs> the the space in terms of the media and and coverage and things like this then you need to start supporting smaller conferences you need to start supporting the 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 bitcoin conferences that have high signal that that would 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 benefit from your support where that where you can talk to the developers one on one i'm talking about conferences like bitcoin plus plus and tabconf so guys yeah. please yeah if 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 you if you do think there's a problem with these bitcoin conferences attend the smaller ones support support the pleb conferences support the technical conferences push bitcoin education you know don't don't You'd be surprised how good of a time they're gonna have you know that too sit, gonna you be can surprised. sit around and complain or you can build and you can help other people build i i choose i choose oh alton you just cut out for me that's it i'm just saying like I, you can either you can either sit around and complain or you can build or try and help other people build and i'm choosing the latter absolutely absolutely and guys i think that wraps up wrecked right yeah that was a lot of wrecked all right guys that's gonna wrap up wrecked and we Sorry are gonna about that. I, oh. I, lo I lost you for a second you also lost us okay you you also lost us yeah we're, we're just wrapping up wrecked and we're gonna move it on actually do you have any final comments for wrecked actually before we move on uh yeah, I, I like your last message there. Support support the good Bitcoin conferences and ignore Bitcoin 2024. Absolutely. Absolutely right. That's going to wrap up Wrecked, guys, and we're going to move it on over to the Hopium. The Hopium. All right, guys, the Hopium. Get ready. Just just get ready. That That's all I've got to say. That's how I'm prefacing this. That's right. We're, we're going to the moon. I mean, like, that's it. Even though Bitcoin's dying, even though, like, all the news was terrible today. That's right, guys. This is recorded on Friday. And today, the traditional markets fell apart. Okay, Bitcoin is dead at, like, 64K, apparently. We're we're dead and we're going lower. And the, the bull market's already happened. We've already missed it, supposedly. I'm here to tell you different. 
this is the hopium segment, so let's dive into it. I, I always appreciate, I always appreciate these macro accounts, right? BTC cycle return on investment measured peak to peak, even with the choppiness since March, guys. BTC is still ahead of where normally it is at this point in the cycle. And boom, we take a look at the lines and yeah, up and to the right. I know you don't like it when I say up and to the right, Walton. It's I know it's just up. We assume it's to the right, but look. No, I just like, time always goes forward, right? Yeah. <laughs> of course, it's, it's up and to the right. <laughs> All right, guys, so there you go, bullish. Here we go, peak one here at the bottom. Okay, we've got the legend. We've got the peak one, two, three with the color scheme. And as you can see, guys, peak peak two, like th this is all the way over here. Guys, we're, we're, we're totally killing it. Bitcoin's just going to the moon. You just got to wait. And if if that, if that didn't convince you, especially a lot of noobs most likely do not know the account whale panda but for some of us we we do remember this account this is a quote unquote og hopium or at least i would call them a hopium account but this is like an og account and here we go yesterday's etf flows were positive for 50 million dollars okay so the bitcoin's new mini etf from grayscale with the lowest fees took in 191 million blackrock took in 25 mil Fidelity had 48.4 million of outflows, but Bitwise had 20 million, ARK had 22, and GBTC, that's right, another big week for Barry, oh, we're surprised, 71.3 million dollars worth. And of course, guys, we, we just, we cannot have Hopium without the typical micro strategy announcement. He's raising another $2 billion to buy more Bitcoin. So the people who are holding those shares, you're about to get diluted, but it's okay because he's getting Bitcoin. So he's saying the magic words, he's doing the magic formula, and everybody's happy because he helps make Bitcoin go up. And that's right, we've got more. We've got more. Dr. Jeff Ross, he's been, for a while now, he's been saying we're in a bear crab. This has been at least like six months, I think eight months that he's been saying we are in a bear crab. And then all of a sudden this tweet came out on August 2nd, lower rates and liquidity incoming. I think I've been waiting long for this moment. And so in brackets, it probably begins. And what's he talking about? Dollar weakening, rates falling, Global M2 rising. The Fed now has the green light to start easing in earnest. All is bullish for Bitcoin. Personally, I'll take advantage of any flash crashes. So although the news was grim and somehow the market just died on this Friday, it seems that there's a lot of bullishness. It seems like there's a lot of hopium. I got to be honest. I mean, I, I don't feel any different than I did three weeks ago than I did six months ago. So for me, it's just like, meh, you know, it's just a bunch of noise. Um, but I, I do, you know, like we, we can't pretend, right, that what politicians say and what the um, financial alchemists do and say don't matter. Like we can't pretend that it doesn't matter because it does influence human behavior. So super test nets these days, how are you feeling? Are you full of hope? Are you totally bullish? Does oh, any of does any of this noise even do anything for you? No, <laughs> uh, it doesn't no. do anything for me. Um, <laughs> Bitcoin works the same at any price. It doesn't matter if it's sixty thousand or six thousand or or six dollars. It it works the exact same way. So it just doesn't interest me. Um, that it, and I also think it's a, like the, one one of those guys was doing what is it called trend analysis. Yeah. He's like, oh, look, the, the chart is higher than it was four years ago. Like that, there's no, no basis in reality. It's just making up numbers, and you can, you can draw a chart with lines wherever you want them to be. Um, the, the 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 scale isn't even right for he's changing the scale for each one. It's, it's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, the, 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 all that is just meaningless noise. And uh, my, so far, this has been my least favorite segment of your show. That, well, that's 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 why we call it the Hopi. <laughs> So let me ask you this, right? Before we go to Walton's comments. I, that's amazing. It. it is awesome. Hold Phil, you're fired. Yes. I'm fired. That's it. Okay. So, but hold on. So hold on though, because, the, you know, we're a signal show. We're a signal show. We usually, so, we usually this section is normally about stomping on the hope and being like, hey, no, no, I want it to. This is that's nonsense. It. Sure no, no, that's it. We want clicks and views. That's it. That's it, Walton. We want clicks and Wait, views. That's all that matters. I, we're, I hope you've changed. 
Yeah, don't be a change. If you're if you're a if you're a signal show, then act like a signal show and don't show a bunch of noise. No, but that's the point is that we show the noise and we talk about how it's a nothing burger. And my next question was going to be before we get Walton's comments on this is this, right? What is it about Bitcoin that makes you bullish? Right. Because obviously this is all just a bunch of noise, right? It's just a bunch of macro speak and it just gets the cheerleaders to cheerlead higher. But what is it about Bitcoin that makes you bullish? I see so much opportunity and so much cool stuff that you can do with Bitcoin. And I, there's, there's no way for me to explore the entire depths of all the of all the coolness that's here. Uh, so I just get to spend my uh, as much time as I can every week figuring out new cool things that you can do with Bitcoin. And that's just wonderful. That's that's what makes me bullish. It's like I get to have fun every day doing something and finding out finding out some new interesting thing. That's that's see, bullish for me. See, your take is my hopium. That's awesome. All right, Walton. What are your thoughts on all? <laughs> so as as per usual, the only thing that I'm more bullish on than Bitcoin is Bitcoiners, and Super Testnet is definitely one of those. Um, yeah. yeah, is there lots of noise that conference? Uh, some of the bigger conferences, yes, but uh, do you also like see some people that are really really building some stuff, and it's you know it's a time that they they a lot of steam. Um, um, I like to say that the Bitcoin is. Bitcoin isn't a company, right? But if we imagine that it is one, actually, we all kind of find roles in the, the company that is Bitcoin. Many people are in its BDSM community. Of course, that's business development, sales and marketing. Um, you know, it's a very, very big community in Bitcoin. Uh, there's many people in education, there's many developers, right? There's a whole bunch of people that, that are kind of sort of in like HR roles or like helping helping the Bitcoin machine chug along. Um, I like to try and try and uh, dedicate some time to to that that department especially, um, but yeah, I don't know. Right now, I'm feeling I don't I don't even know what the price is. It goes up and down a bit. Like uh, I think is there is there a dip right now maybe? But I, I don't I, the, the, I, I don't really care about that. I care about like the sentiment, not the sentiment of like people that care about the price. I care about the sentiment of the people that are actually building things. Why? Care about Bitcoin. Because that's what I do in Bitcoin. I try and make sure these people that are building stuff are actually doing pretty good and they want to keep building stuff because actually I think that's quite important. Um, so yeah, help help those people have some fun. Help those people make connections because yes, decentralization is great when it comes to networks and when it, great when it comes to something like Bitcoin, but decentralization is something that's terrible when it comes to community. And so... Yeah, me and a few more people are trying to trying to work on the community aspects. I do think people say people say there's no community in Bitcoin. And that's nonsense. I think there's a huge amount of community in Bitcoin. I think we have one of the best communities in the world. Um, and are there different groups of it? Sure, like in, like any community. But I think one one like one factor I think that could really kind of drive bitcoin adoption to more people is actually showing not not what we know not what bitcoin can do but actually the community that we have in bitcoin show that actually hey we're, we're some there's some good people here trying to do good things with hope for the future and i think that that's really something that's gonna yeah the real lift the real network and, network and, and the connect friends we made with, along the way it's gonna right, but this is gonna this is gonna connect with the wider audience. It's not they they, they don't care about the, the tech. They they want to know like, hey, are we in are we in a good community? And yeah, maybe it's kind of some shitcoin nonsense, this kind of like fluffy stuff. But actually, like w we can apply it on top of like good solid real foundations, hmm. right? Welcome to Bitcoin. We've got good people. <laughs> Welcome to All Bitcoin. Right. We've got good people that don't always that's see it. eye to eye. That's All right, it. guys. Yeah. That, and, uh, yeah go that's fuck it. yourselves. It, All right. It so wraps, yeah. the first, oh. Now that's done. All right. So hopium is done. And guys, that is going to wrap up the show. But before we go, Super Testnet, how can people find you? How can the viewers and listeners, if they want to reach you, how can they do that? What's the best way? You can go to my website, supertestnet.org. That's where all the links are for the various socials. If you're on Twitter, I'm super underscore testnet. If you're on Nostra, I'm super space testnet. There's a space between the two words. On Telegram, I'm super testnet. One word, no space, no underscore. On YouTube, I'm high-level Bitcoin. Uh, and yeah, but that's all at supertestnet.org, so you can find it there. 
Very cool. Okay, we're going to put that in the show notes, guys. As you know, wraps up the episode. Don't forget to check us out on our audio-only platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor. Thank you. If you, if you want to stream us sats, check us out on fountain.fm. Walton, how do we end it? We love you, Super Test Net. All right, see you guys next week. Thanks, bye. See ya. Bye-bye. Peace. Action quest! What?